What's happening everyone, Nick here once again with another new TV box for the holidays. This is the latest Mikul KM7 running on the Amlogic S905Y2 CPU on Android 11 tvOS with Google certification and AV1 decoding. This latest edition runs on 4GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage. It also has DRM support to play premium movie services in HD and 4K. And it also features Google Assistant and built-in Chromecast. So in this detailed review, we'll look at its hardware and features and I'll also run some live demonstrations, so stay tuned. So this is what you get inside the box. You get the KM7 TV box itself. One Bluetooth voice remote with Google Assistant's feature. You get one HDMI cable. A 5V to amps DC power adapter. And a user manual. The box itself has a very basic design. It's made of plastic with the Mikul branding to the top. It has one HDMI port, one Ethernet LAN port, one AV port and the DC power input jack to the rear. To the side, it has two USB 2.0 ports and an SD card reader. At the front, it has some LED indicators. And below the box, it has four anti skid rubber pads and lots of cooling vents. Upon startup, you will have to complete the Android TV OS Startup Wizard by first connecting the Bluetooth remote to the box, logging in to your home network, and signing in to your Google account. So once completed, you will be presented with this familiar launcher that we all know to be the Android TV OS launcher. If I head over to the settings area under the About section, here you will see that you are running on Android 11 operating system and here is the Android TV OS build information. With this firmware, you get 4K display up to 2160p at 59.9Hz with HDR display always on as it's shown here on my capture card. You get HDMI CEC options, surround sound audio options, built-in Chromecast and a Google Assistant feature. One feature missing from this lineup is a Netflix ESN certification, so we all know what that means. And I will speak more of it in just a moment. During the startup wizard, you would have the option to choose whether to install all the apps you see here or just the ones you want. So I chose to install all of them. And from the selection, I see they have included all the major premium movie services with the exception of Netflix. You have one IPTV app, and a couple of video streaming platforms such as YouTube, Twitch, and Vimeo. So before I test its features, let's first have a look at its system and hardware information. On the system, it shows that the model is the KM7. It runs on 4GB of RAM, and I can't tell what type it is because it's not listed anywhere on the product page, so I assume it's DDR3. It has 64GB of internal storage, what you see here is the remainder after the Android installation and apps installed. The Bluetooth version is 5.2. Its CPU is the Amlogic S905Y2 and it's a quad-core Cortex A35 CPU clocked at 2.0 GHz configured in 32-bit mode with support for only 32-bit ABIs. Its display is powered by the Mali G31 with OpenGL ES version 3.2. On the network, it shows that it has 5 GHz Wi-Fi support. On the Android, it shows that the operating system is Android 11 and it shows that the device is not rooted. On the devices, it shows that it has Vulkan support. On the temperature, you can't get a reading. On the codex, you can identify decoders such as DTS-HD, AV1, HEVC and VP9 decoding. I could not identify any Dolby decoders, but I will test for them later in the video. To confirm its Google certification, here its DRM information shows that it has Google Widevine Level 1 with HDCP 2.2 protection. This means that premium movie services can stream in HD and 4K quality. Also, 
Here the root checker app shows that the box is not rooted. This is another requirement that needs to go hand in hand with Google certification. However, I assumed that Mikul was out of the woods with Netflix. Well, it appears not, for they have not included any Netflix ESN certification to run the official version of Netflix. Well, all is not lost as you can still enjoy Netflix in HD quality using a modified APK version. This version only works if the box has Google Widevine Level 1 with HDCP 2.2 protection, which I just showed you this box has. So here in the modified version, you can stream your Netflix movies in HD quality only. You don't get 4K, but at least it's better than 480p. If you need this modified version, you would have to contact me directly via email at tvboxstop at gmail.com. This situation only applies to Netflix, as the box can play all other premium movie services in HD and 4K quality such as Amazon Prime Video, Disney+, Plus, Sling TV, HBO Max and a couple others. YouTube plays in 4K 2160p quality with HDR. Because it's running on a Google certified version of Android TV operating system, it comes with the official version of Chromecast. You can use Chromecast in two ways. First, you can mirror your mobile device directly to the box like I'm doing now, or you can use the Chromecast feature built into certain streaming apps such as YouTube, Netflix, and Amazon Prime Video, among many others. Another important feature of Android TV OS is Google Assistant. The included Bluetooth voice remote comes with a dedicated Google Assistant button that can be used to perform voice commands. What's the weather in Miami? Currently in Miami, Florida, it's 71 degrees and cloudy. Tonight, the forecast is around 74 with showers. There is currently a flash flood warning in effect. Under Codex, in the System and Hardware Information segment, we saw that it has all the decoders for the playback of 4K videos with HDR formats and videos with AV1 formatting. So I'll first play my list of 4K HDR videos, then I'll play my list of videos with AV1 formatting. Only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico. But the head-to-head -head goal difference is what counts in the case of a tie on points. The mosaic of the Camp Nou and the...
So using the VLC player, most of my 4K HDR videos played without issues, with the exception of the jellyfish video that froze up a bit during the playback. I will now play my list of videos with AV1 formatting. So using the box's default movie player, the AV1 videos played without issues. So to test for surround sound audio formats, here I have it connected to my 7.1 audio receiver and I'll be testing for Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, DTS-HD Master Audio, THX and Dolby True HD. I will be doing this with the box connected in HDMI pass-through configuration. So this test reveals and it confirms what we saw under the codex information and that is this box cannot play Dolby Atmos, Dolby Surround or Dolby True HD formats. It plays basic DTS but you don't get a DTS-X, DTS-HD Master Audio or THX. 
I will now play some Android games to test its graphics rendering performance. You don't get gamepad key mapping or heat monitoring on the Android TV OS, and most games are gamepad ready. Work, you piece of junk. So the games played smoothly and the graphics was of a high quality. My Bluetooth gamepad connected to the box without issues and had no compatibility issues with these games. And now let's look at its benchmarks. First, it's RAM and internal storage. It has a RAM copy speed of 3218 megabytes per second. Its internal storage has a read speed of 119 megabytes per second and a write speed of 65. Next, it's Wi-Fi and Ethernet LAN speed tests. On my network of 150 megabits per second, the 5 gigahertz band achieved 100% of my bandwidth, the 2.4 gigahertz band achieved 8%, and the LAN port achieved 62%. So the 2.4 gigahertz band are not performing so well on this box, and the LAN port, though works perfectly, is not a gigabit LAN port, so it's limited to 100 megabits per second. Next, the results of the Antutu benchmark, and in this test it scored 86,098. This is an OK score and we will see where it places on the chart. Next, it's Geekbench 4 CPU single core and multi core time speed tests. In this test it scored 682 single core and 1913 multi core. And finally, in its 3 Mark GPU graphics rendering benchmark, it scored 5,871 in the iStorm Extreme test, 582 in the Slingshot test, and 370 in the Slingshot Extreme test with the Vulkan support. So these benchmarks are what I consider to be good benchmarks for a TV box in this class. Let's now see where it places on the chart. So after entering the scores on my rankings chart, the new Mikul KM7 is at position 24 in reference to Antutu benchmark scores. You can view this chart on my blog in a full spreadsheet format where you can compare various benchmarking scores and I also provide price comparison links right here. See the link in the description below this video. So in summary. The new Mikul KM7 is the first TV box I've reviewed to run on Android 11 TV operating system that is Google certified. With its CPU clocked at 2.0 GHz, its user interface is fast, resulting in some good performance benchmarks. You can watch premium movie services in HD and 4K quality, and if you load a modified version of Netflix, you can get at least HD. It plays 4K HDR videos and AV1 videos smoothly without issues, and for surround sound audio output, I only cut DTS. It comes with a Bluetooth voice remote with Google Assistant's feature and my Bluetooth gamepad connected and stayed connected without issues. I also got some really good 3D graphics rendering performance during Android gaming. And with that said, I've come to the end of this review. Black Friday is around the bend, and Mikul is offering an exclusive TV Box Top discount of $20 with the included coupon below this video. So take advantage before the coupon expires. I also placed a 10% discount coupon in case you missed out on the Black Friday coupon. So thanks for watching. Give this video the thumbs up if you like this box. 
If you are new to this channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell before leaving to receive a message in your notifications as to when I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, stay tuned and I'll be seeing you in the next one.